Welcome to The Wedding Edit, a wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. Welcome back, guys. Welcome it's Kelly back. and Dana here today. <laughs> and we are matching. If you can't, if you're not watching on YouTube, <laughs> we're actually both wearing, um, I'm wearing tan pants and Dana, Dana's wearing a tan skirt and, and we're both wearing cream rowy knit tops. So, woo. <sighs> yeah. I promise we didn't plan that. <laughs> no, we didn't. You did tell me what you were going to wear though. I did. So Dana copied me. Yeah. <laughs> So today we're going to give you all of our juicy tips on how to save money on your wedding. So it's the biggest question that I get asked. Mm, yeah. It's probably a really big question you get yeah. asked as well. So without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. Tip one, do not have a wedding party or if you do, have a very small wedding party. Mm, yeah. I think that's a really good idea. Well, anyway, not like to not have one but to – be very considerate or intentional with who you are choosing anyway because they're people that you want to have by your side almost for the rest of your life like your marriage as well anyway. And also it's not a popularity contest. No, it's, it's not. not I've got yeah. the most friends. It's yeah. like I've got a client at the moment who is having seven bridesmaids and eight oh, groomsmen. Seven is a now lot. their floral budget was very small yeah. but she wanted to ha- wants to have bouquets for everyone. So they're mm. spending – over $1,500 just on bouquets. Mm. So if you don't have a big budget, you know, like think about all the money you could save yeah. if you don't have a wedding party. Yeah. The wedding party might also appreciate, you know, coming as a guest anyway because then they don't have to wear matching outfits. Like they might oh, not absolutely. need to anyway. But, um, yeah, I think it's really nice when the bridesmaids are like friends but like they have the opportunity to choose their hairstyle or their dress. Yep. Like I love that about a wedding party instead of being like, okay, it has to be this hair, has to be this makeup, has to be this dress. Just be And yourself. it's all like matching. Yeah. yeah. So I love it when it's different. Like it's just it's yep. just so much um, more to the individual. And I think when somebody looks like themselves rather than like all matching, I think they look better. They feel better too. Yeah. But also I had another um, a friend uh, like – the place I go to for like the beauty salon I go to, mm-hmm. her sister got married recently and she's got, I think they didn't want to have a wedding party. Mm-hmm. So the, her, the two sisters of the bride, she just said to them, can you wear like something in the wedding colour palette yeah, so we can nice. have some photos together yeah. but I don't want to have a wedding party. So you won't yeah. have bouquets. But it was really nice because they still had had some photos together as sisters yeah. and it looked like they were bridesmaids yeah. but it was this wear whatever shoes you want, both mm-hmm. wear, this is the colour palette, bright red and br- bright pink so just wear something yeah. colourful. I think that's yeah. so nice, yeah. So, yeah, it, I think that you can still like – you know, you can still have, it's not like you're going to have to get ready on your own. You can still yeah. get ready with loved ones. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. So our next tip for saving money is to ditch the wedding favours. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. This is my favourite. I know <laughs> with some families it's a tradition that, yeah. you know, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. So that's fine. Mm-hmm. Totally get that. But if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, don't bother. Yeah. Save your money. Well, they just get left behind. I they think. do at every yeah. wedding. We've talked about this in another episode yeah. actually. So, have, yeah. yeah. Um, our third tip is don't do bouquets or buttonholes if you do have a wedding party. So if you really want to have a wedding party mm-hmm. but you also don't have a big floral budget, yeah, just they don't have to have, you know, they don't have to be holding a bouquet. No, that's right. I mean you could give them a single stem flower. Yeah, that's true. Might look a bit weird. I don't know. <laughs> so I think. One issue that comes up with not having flowers if you're having bridesmaids that walk up the aisle is what do they do with their hands? Like it looks a little bit odd. But I saw at a wedding recently and I really like this, the bridesmaids were just standing at the top of the aisle. They didn't have to walk down. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that fixes that really easily. And then, I mean, the bride can still walk down if she wants to. Actually, yeah. one of my bridesmaids actually sang me down the aisle yeah. um, because she's a singer and I was like, I can't have anyone else but her. Yeah. And now that I think about it, I gave her a bouquet. Like why? But I suppose <laughs> it kind of made sense. But now when I look back, I'm like, why did I do everything the yeah. way that, you know, the way that I, I just didn't do it in my own way and yeah. I regret that. Yeah. So anyway, we could go yeah. on about that. We'll do Absolutely. another episode on doing it your way (laughs) yeah absolutely with the buttonholes too uh I see a lot of confusion around buttonholes at weddings like 
usually none of the groomsmen know how to put them on. They don't know where to put them. Yeah. Mm. So if you've got eight groomsmen and they all need to attach a buttonhole, yeah. that is a long time. Well, normally we end up doing it as the photographers, but I've seen lots of poorly structured buttonholes where there's like a really big like rose head or a really big flower head, like of the bud, um, and they snap. Like if they're not done yeah. properly, they will snap. Um, and, and then all of a sudden you're not wearing them anyway. Because well, yeah, well, you have to take can't. like this big flower off or the groomsmen are like trying to like MacGyver some kind of <laughs> um, buttonhole out of like other flowers. Oh, so I most just. Most florists I know don't like making them. Yeah. They're really labour intensive buttonholes. Yeah, they would be. And so are bouquets. So. Get rid of them, I say. Just, don't you think, Olive? What do you think? <laughs> Olive's like, I want a bouquet. <laughs> oh gosh, she's being so naughty today. Ow! Olive! You're biting. You're naughty. Can we deal with her, babe? Another tip for saving money is to not have a cake. Now, I know that's a little bit controversial because cakes are very traditional when it comes to weddings and you might absolutely love cake. Like when I think about our wedding, I love eating cake and my mum is a cake maker. So, it wasn't really an option not to have a cake, but yeah. if Doug had it his way, it would have been like cheese or cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, and look, so, if it's not you, if you're yeah. both not cake people, yeah, just you can always it. offer um, roaming desserts later. Yeah. So that means you don't need a dessert for every guest yeah. because they can they can carry the staff can just carry them around on trays and yeah. something small, bite size, yeah. finger food. But also, like lots of venues will charge you for plating your cake as well. So it's not just the cost of your actual cake, it's placing it as well. Cutting it. Yeah, it's well. like I think it's something like um, $10 a head. Oh, I thought it was a little sure. bit less than that. But, it, yeah, no, it, some venues it really, charge $10 a head. I'm sure my really venue up. charged that. Yeah. So we were like, do you know what, we're just going to get cupcakes. Yeah. So we we put cupcakes out, Yeah. Um, not one for every guest but like probably to cover 70% of guests yeah. and then we just um, had a cake to cut yeah. and then we took that and ate it the next day. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's a really good idea. Uh, I think also some venues you're obligated, like you have to actually get a dessert as well, like they have a spend. On their menu. Yeah. 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 So so the, I guess the best way to do it is make it a shared platter of yeah. desserts. Um, another way to save money on your wedding is get ready together or at home. So... Either if you're going to get an Airbnb, just get ready together at that and then it's only one, you know, accommodation to pay for. Yeah. Um, or you could get ready at home together depending on where your wedding is but mm. you could save on accommodation by rather than getting two different Airbnbs or hotel yeah. rooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another one on top of that as well is that because I know some couples be like, well, I don't want to see – like they, they don't want to see each My other partner. before the wedding. Yeah. Um, which like – you can get an Airbnb that is separate enough. Like we had one couple that didn't see each other before their wedding and they got ready in the same space yeah, um, same. at the same time but they just had like it was just kind of halved if that makes sense. So, I mean, you'd have to be particular about the Airbnb that you choose but it is possible and also with timings for things. So you can have the grooms, um, the groomsmen um, rock up at one one point and have all of their photos and then have the other side of the party they can rock up at another time and have all of their photos at another time. Yeah. The boys so, could go and get lunch or breakfast yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. So it's very doable. You just have to be creative with your timings. Yeah. So, But it will save you money and it will actually save you photography time as well so you'll get more out of your photographer. Yeah, and mm. every penny counts when it yes. comes to weddings, let's be honest. <laughs> so what's the next one? So the next one's a little bit of a no-brainer, but yeah. having your ceremony and your reception at the same place, yeah. that will save you money and obviously there's not any travel as well. Yeah, which is exactly. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one's pretty obvious, but mm. it has to be on the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next one is choose a venue that has a lot of inclusions and in furniture or decor that you actually like. Yeah. Meaning you don't have to get chairs and that's pretty much a no-brainer as well. You don't have to get the chairs in. Um, I, I have had couples that, they quickly rush in and book a venue mm. and then they realise they don't like a lot of things about the venue yeah. and then all of a sudden they have to spend money on changing mm. it or they have to pay the venue $1,000 or more to remove everything that they don't like about it. Yeah. Because, again, it is a cost to the venue. We shouldn't expect venues to remove hundreds of chairs and tables. Yeah. 
free of charge. And then they need to store them somewhere where they're not being seen as well. Exactly. And I think it's it's hard because I understand where couples are coming from when they're like, but we booked the venue, it should look how we want it to look. And it's like that's totally fine. But if you're expecting a venue to change it entirely, the space entirely, you know, it's going to come at a cost if they have to find storage. Yeah. All things to talk about when you book a venue. Maybe we'll talk about that in another episode. Yeah. So another tip on saving money for your wedding is to have an intimate wedding or to elope. Yep, totally. And, you know, when you when you when if you have an intimate wedding, you can often book an all-inclusive package Yeah, like ours. <laughs> yeah. You know, we offer um, Dana and I partner on a package and I've got a bunch of other photographers, mm-hmm. florists, and so we have like an all-inclusive you know, um, it saves you money because we've already done the groundwork. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of mood boards you can choose from. So it's not custom, but you can choose the mood board that fits your style. Um, so you're going to save money because you're saving us time essentially in sourcing suppliers. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Um, the next tip is don't do bus transport or wedding cars. Bus transport alone for 100 guests is going to cost somewhere between I don't know, one to $2,000 depending on how far. So why people can just find their own way there. <laughs> I know that sounds harsh but, you know, it's a wedding. Like I People don't, expect to drive. People either expect to drive or get an Uber. They can yeah. all share a minibus if they mm-hmm. want to organise one together. I don't think it's an expectation that you have to get buses. Mm-hmm. Some venues do require you to get buses though due to fire Um like emergency safety procedures because if you don't have a bus booked and something happens and there's a bushfire, it's the only way to quickly get everyone off the property. So so interesting, I didn't know that. Important um, fact because it's something I've learned over time. Mm. So make sure you check with your venue. You don't want to leave your guests stranded in a bushfire. So our next tip is to have a midweek wedding. Yeah, Monday to Thursday as long as the Monday is not a public holiday. (laughs) Yeah, no public holidays. Yeah. Yeah, because it will cost you more if you have it on a public holiday, which is actually good to probably mention that if you actually have your wedding Christmas, so like just prior to Christmas or between Christmas and New Year's or on New Year's, you need to expect to pay 10 to 20% more. Yeah, well, even double with some because wages are double. Yeah. The staff. It's so really hard. your caterer, your everyone's paying double the yeah. amount on yeah. public holidays. I I think even New Year's Eve after a certain time. Yeah. Is it mid after midnight? They're paying oh. double time. Yeah, because then it's a public holiday because New Year's Day is public yeah, holiday. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had a caterer say that to me once because their client got really annoyed when they yeah. said like we're gonna have to charge like more. Yeah. And they were like why and like well we're there till 3 a.m packing up you know yeah so yeah it's three hours of double pay double what you would pay the um next tip is have a winter wedding so in the off season yeah they're so beautiful definitely and worth you know getting quotes if you don't hate the cold weather and if you choose a venue that's cozy that has like a fireplace how lovely yeah So the next one is to book photography and videography through the same supplier. But also like you and I have a package together for elopements, some photographers and videographers that like aren't from the same company, they're from different companies, they've got packages together as well. Yeah. So you can always find out and it always is best, like whichever is more important to you, if it's videography or photography, talk to that person that you booked first about booking the other thing, whether it's photography or videography, and they'll be able to give you who yeah. they work with really well. Is um, that offensive to you? Like if I booked you for photography mm-hmm. and then I was like, oh, hey, guys, mm-hmm. like I would feel weird saying who do you work with for videography? <laughs> would you be like, oh, you don't like our videos? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Like some some couples do choose to go with a different videography company um, and I'm not entirely sure – why sometimes like I I think um, it might be that they the style they, get, they might just love yeah they get set style. on the style so it's I think some people think that they might get less if they book both through us but they're not they're actually getting more yeah and it's better for them to be honest but so. also are you offended if they're like look we really like these videographers 
do, who do you recommend? No, these no. Three? Like, yeah, who if do they, you recommend? If they came to us and gave us like three names of who they really liked and were like, we're really struggling to decide between these three, normally it would be between two. Um, I, I would totally be like, oh, yeah, like from what I know of the couple and what I know of the supplier, I would be like, I think this person is you well. best yeah. matched. Yeah. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, they just have to get a good vibe from and whoever. chat to them. Yeah. yeah. So, hire your wedding outfits or buy them secondhand. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of options for that, and you know, there's you can buy your wedding dress secondhand. Mm-hmm. You can hire your suits if you're having suits. Yeah, um, I think so. it's a really great idea, especially like. Dress hire as well for bridesmaids. There's so yeah. many dress hire oh, places. Absolutely. So yeah. much better for the environment. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Those options went around when I was getting married. Mm-hmm. Gosh, I sound so old. <laughs> yeah. I think any time that you get, like if I thought about getting a secondhand dress, you can easily get it tailored to look better like on you. Yeah. yeah. And um, Danielle Symes is a perfect example of, I'm pretty sure she got her wedding dress from an op shop and it was stunning. I think yeah. she altered it a bit. Yeah. But we'll, yeah, have to chat to her about that. (laughs) So our last tip for saving money for your wedding is to have in-season florals. Um, So we speak with Lydia from STEM House in episode 12. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> all about flowers. Yes, all about flowers and it's uh, it's very informational. But, um, yeah, choosing florals that are in season rather than having to have them that are overseas. Imported. Yeah. yeah. Premium be- roses, orchids, mm-hmm. like a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of flowers that – so you can do some research, Googling, find out what's in season in your region mm-hmm. when you're getting married. If you want to save money and if you go with a florist that has a lot of experience, they can usually – offer you alternatives that might look like a certain flower that's not in season but still be able to get that same look. There's so many different options to still achieve a similar look. Yeah. So if you want to hear more about how to budget for your wedding or you'd like to get a copy of our budget planner template, you can go to episode number two and listen to that. Um, And then also on our website is the budget planner. If you have any questions that you would love us to answer, just send us a DM on Instagram at the wedding edit underscore podcast or email us at contact at the wedding edit podcast.com.au. If you have any of your own saving money hacks that you'd like to share with us, please get in contact and we'll be able to share them with our audience. Thanks so much for listening to the wedding edit. We'll see you next time. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Listen to you later. <laughs> <laughs>